Hey, y'all, do I have some updates for you? So Google for Education has just announced so many updates and I got a sneak peek so that I could record this video and have all of this ready to share with you as soon as possible. So they created this fantastic sketch here that summarizes all of the things. And many of these things may look familiar. Some things that have already come out that are available, but there's many things that are still coming. So I'm going to break this down for you. And please go to shakeuplearning.com forward slash 193 on April 4th or later and catch the podcast episode that I'm going to do. So I'm going to go more in depth in fact, I'm not quite sure. It may even be a series. I'm not sure if I can get it all in one episode, but I'm going to go more in depth and have a companion blog post that will share much more detail than you get in this video today. But we're just going to do a quick overview of all of the things that were announced. So first off, we want to talk about Google Classroom Practice Sets. You may have heard of this. You may have even been a beta tester. It is coming soon. So what practice sets allow you to do is upload a PDF and transform it into an interactive assignment inside Google Classroom. You can also give students real-time feedback and support. So this looks awesome. I haven't had access to this yet, but I know many who have. And if you just watch this quick little animation, you'll see you create it inside Google Classroom and it looks quite similar to a, a Google form, but you can import that PDF and select the questions and it's going to allow you to choose the type of response. This one happens to be a single select of multiple choice, but you can do much more than this, including something called concept cards. And this is a math example. So math teachers are going to love this. You've got a drawing tool and access to all of those special characters and things that you need for math. And you can tell I'm not a math teacher, but you know what I mean. This is huge. So being able to create this and make this part of Google Classroom, you're going to see this is, this is kind of a theme. Um, tools that we've had to go to other places to use are now going to be native to Google. So this one's native to Google Classroom and coming soon. The other thing that's coming to Google Classroom is the ability to take a YouTube video and make it interactive and add questions for students. So you can visually introduce and reinforce concepts and give students the ability to go at their own pace. So um, you can create these, assign these in Google Classroom. Teachers will get an overview of their students' progress and insights. So we're going to get some data from it as well. Here's a quick screenshot of what this may look like. And um, you'll see even as the student, you'll be able to know where those stopping points are. And the teacher will be able to see if they're actually watching it and answering the questions as they go. Love it. Um, I know we've used many other tools before, um, but it's nice, again, to have this embedded into Google Classroom. All right, let's move to Screencast. So the Screencast app on Chrome OS for Chromebooks is what we're talking about here. That is made by Google. And I actually did a blog post on this uh, a few months ago. I was an early tester of this and I love it. It's very clean, it's very simple, very easy to use. Um, so students and teachers can use this. They can create, trim, share, and view transcribed videos and build a library of educational content that can be accessed at school or at home. So as a teacher, great for recording lessons, recording demos, recording quick tutorials, and things like that. And um, the Screencast app was definitely something that was needed for Chromebooks. The other thing that we have now is called Cast Moderator. And this is another thing that I had early access to. Cast Moderator is wirelessly allowing the screen share to a central display. So just like Chromecast, if you've used a Chromecast or you know how to cast or use AirPlay, you get this concept. But this is now um, something that students can do from their Chromebooks and teachers can do. But you can have, you know, students sharing as well as teachers and mirroring their screens. You can even freeze the screen. And as a teacher, you know how important that is. So you can actually go 
you know, take attendance while you have something else on the screen and uh, really, really powerful uh, to have that option. Next up for Chromebooks, we have something called Reading Mode. And if you have been subscribing to this channel and getting those Google Quick Tips every week, a few weeks ago, I shared the Chrome side panel. And this is very much related to that. You're going to see that in just a second, but you'll be able to remove distractions and see just the text that you need, which is great for students. The addition of cursive which is a new app that will um, digitize handwritten notes you'll be able to capture edit and organize those notes that one is also um, available for chrome and sketch and draw with canvas so to draw and visualize concepts as well so here is reading mode um, like we said we looked at the reading list when i did that quick tip but reading mode was not an option that i had so this is um going to give them that clean text to see on the screen. But I like that it's kind of a side by side too, because a lot of times the picture still adds something to what you're reading, but sometimes there's so much junk on the screen, it can be extremely distracting. So um, I'm really excited about this. Next up, we have some integration between Google Slides and Google Meet. So um, some of these things have already been released. Some of these things I've already talked about myself and even created videos for, but being able to see speaker notes while presenting is huge. If you're a speaker, <laughs> you know this, and, and this is something that I have needed um, to be able to do when I am presenting via Google Meet and I use Google Slides all the time. So being able to see those speaker notes is huge. Co-present slides and make co-teaching easier so you can actually share the slide and control that. Closed captioning. So closed captioning has been something they have been adding to kind of every tool that has any kind of video ability. But what's new is added to those recordings and having that closed caption ability. And y'all, closed captions are available in other languages too, if you didn't know that. So um, I myself rely a lot on closed captioning, not because of, uh, you know, any hearing problems, but because <laughs> I got used to it when my son was a baby and I had to basically mute everything so I didn't wake the baby and I got used to it and I actually like it. I like to do that. And Jen Giffen actually shared with me that she turns the captions on for her children at home and it helps them learn vocabulary words as well. So I thought that was a great tip. And um, y'all, it definitely helps those who need it, but it is great for all learners to have those closed captions. There's just sometimes things that we don't hear or hear correctly and being able to have that is, is a really nice feature. Custom backgrounds. So we've been able to customize the background in Google Meet for a while. And um you know, you can blur the background, you can do some other things, but now schools and other organizations can actually create their own background and push that out for everybody to use to kind of solidify your brand. So if it's your school, your school district, or if you work um, for an organization to have that kind of seamlessly integrated. And then the last one is super cool. It's called AI powered hand raise gesture detection. And um, you just have to see this to believe it. So AI is actually recognizing when someone raises their hand and will let you know if you are the speaker or presenter in Google Meet. So I really like that. Sometimes it's hard to see what people are doing, especially if you have more than four people inside a Google Meet. So that is a, a really neat little feature. All right, let's talk about Smart Canvas. And I actually just right before I recorded this, recorded a quick tip video with some smart canvas features, including stopwatch. So um, let me get to that. The smart canvas features are um, going to include those things that we do when we type the at symbol, the kind of insert things, as well as building blocks. And I've been talking about those things for probably at least a year now as they have rolled out and they are some super cool features inside docs. So these custom building blocks are going to help teachers save time with reusable templates for things like lesson plans and curriculum guides. They've also created voting chips that you can put inside a doc to increase 
participation and being able to gather feedback and input. And last but not least, the timer and stopwatch chips. So these are super cool. Um, it, it's rolling out right now. And in fact, according to the rollout schedule, I should have it, but I, I don't. And so I'm a little disappointed when I recorded my video that it wasn't working for me. But if you type in at timer or at stopwatch inside docs, you can actually get a timer. And here's what it looks like. At timer, click on timer, and then um, you can actually set it for 10 minutes like they did right there. Y'all teachers need timers all the time. Now this is handy for students as well. The stopwatch um, was the one that I was aware of. I was hoping they were gonna add a timer. And um, you know, with with the stopwatch, being able to see how long it takes you to read something, to practice fluency, um, using the timer for transitions, using the timer for um, different activities. Now, I also know sometimes timers stress people out, so just keep that in mind and use it in a in a very mindful way with your students. And here is an example of the custom building blocks. Now, I don't have a great idea yet of how this is going to work because that is not how a lesson plan would look for me. But I, I hope um, that this will be very, very useful. But I feel like lesson plans are so personal and um, can vary even by the requirements of your school or your district. So I hope that this is something that we can use. And then here's an example of the voting chips, which will look a little bit like an emoji reaction. So you do add that chip and then whoever is in the document can actually um, add their their voting so they can vote things and see what they're interested in, share feedback, et cetera. And this was something I was kind of predicting when I was talking about using drop down menus um, in another podcast episode and blog post. Uh, so I'm interested to try this in some of the ways that it, that I was talking about in that post. All right, coming up last and not least is the privacy and security. So they are definitely putting this at the forefront, which I appreciate as a parent and a teacher. I believe that it is becoming harder and harder to protect children online and they are adding some extra layers. So this definitely makes me happy. So some of these things are specific to Chrome OS and some of these things are specific to the admin panel. And hopefully <clears throat> I was I was putting this together very quickly. So hopefully I got everything on the right slide. But um, the ability to block, warn and report end user actions, um, use the clipboard and printing screen capture and sharing. So when you need to actually um, clipboard or screen capture some of those things that are going on and a dynam dynamic electronic privacy screen controls. So being able to um, add these extra layers is huge. Google Security Center integration. I um, don't know a lot about this. There wasn't a whole lot of detail, but I believe that if you are um, an admin or a tech administrator, these will be really important to you. The other thing that I'm really excited about are app badges. And these will help admins evaluate important app information in the admin console. So they will get badges and it kind of like gives them a rating. So you will know where um, and what you are adding into your system here. The ability to set rules for apps that are accessing workspace data via APIs and, you know, APIs allow one thing to talk to another. And we have to be really careful about that. You know, one of the things that's exploding right now is ChatGPT, and they have an API. And so they may, you know, have many, I'm sure, that are already working inside Google Workspace. And if you're in charge of data for your school, you want to make sure you know what apps are accessing that data. So that that is huge. Block managed Chrome browsers and set data protection rule conditions and to understand the number of users impacted before deployment. I summarize that very quickly, but, um, you know, understanding what's going on and how many people will be um, impacted before you push something out is is definitely something your users will appreciate. So there's just so much going on and so much to share. I hope 
that this video was useful. Again, I'm going to go more in depth in the podcast, don't worry, but I wanted to get this out to you as soon as possible. So be sure that you hop on over to shakeuplearning.com and that you subscribe to the Shake Up Learning YouTube channel and I'll continue to share more. Bye, y'all.